Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and welcome to this episode of Ask Raghav. Today we are going to see a uh, four very common and very important scenarios in Selenium or you can say in uh, web automation testing that you can handle with Selenium. Now these scenarios, these questions can be asked to you in interviews or in general as well. You will be facing these scenarios when you work with a uh, web automation using Selenium. So let us see all these scenarios. The first one is you are asked to automate a test case that requires you to scroll to the bottom of a page. How would you do this? Now in Selenium, we have multiple ways. You can scroll to a particular element. You can also scroll by the X and Y indexes. You can say, I want to move this much right and this much down on the page. You can do that. You can also take some origin point and from there you can scroll uh, right and down. So you can also do that. So we have these options you can say scroll to element you can scroll by given amount you can also scroll from an element by a given amount you can scroll from an element with an offset on the screen you can scroll from a offset of origin element by given amount now you should keep these options in your mind you should remember that these are all the options we have and if you want to see some examples you can go to the official website of selenium which is selenium dev so let me show you if you go here, this is the link Selenium Dev. I will keep all the notes and all the links in the description of this video. You can check from there as well. So here you can see you can first scroll to element. OK, so this is how you can. You can use the actions class of Selenium and then you can say scroll to element and then go to that particular element and then perform. OK, then you can also scroll by given amount. You can set the x and y coordinates so this much i want to move right and this much i want to move down and then you can scroll by that given amount as well then you can scroll from an element by a given amount so you can see here we can set the origin of that element and then from here i want to move this much right and this much down okay then you can scroll from an element with an offset so you can uh you can uh, use the position of the screen and you can set how much you want to move. So here also you can see we can set the origin and then we can then scroll from the origin and set the coordinates as well. Now, if you want to see the full examples, working examples, you can also see this on this GitHub page. So here are all the links. Scroll from an offset of your origin by given amount. This also you can do like this. You can also see the example here. So in general, you should keep in your mind. You should remember that these are the options and then you can see the working examples as well. OK. So this was scenario one. If you want, you can take a screenshot of the screen. Keep it handy with you. Let us move to scenario two. You are asked to automate a test case that requires you to click on a button that is only visible after a certain condition is met. How would you do this? So whenever you have such kind of scenarios where uh, you can do this only after this particular condition is met, here you can use explicit weight in Selenium along with expected condition. So let me show you an example. So here you can see here we have this is we are getting the locator of a button. So this is the we are finding the button. We are getting the locator. But before clicking on the button, we have to make sure that the button is visible. So we will use explicit weight. We will say wait until and then expected condition element to be clickable and then button locator, whatever is the locator we have created. OK, so in this case, we are saying element to be clickable element should be uh, available and should be ready to be clicked. We ha also have conditions like element should be visible, not visible. All these things we have in expected conditions and then you can click on the button and then you can use this example. So whenever you have such kind of scenarios, always remember you can use explicit weight and you can use uh, you can use expected conditions with that. OK, let us move to the third scenario. You are asked to automate a test case that requires you to interact with a JavaScript alert. How would you do this? Now in Selenium, you can interact with all these JavaScript alerts, pop up boxes, prompt boxes, confirmation boxes. And here there are different uh, ways you can use the alert interface of the Selenium library. And here again, you can check some examples on the official website of Selenium. So if I show you here, 
you can see this javascript alerts prompts and confirmations here you can see here we are using the alert interface and here you are we are saying wait until here again we are using wait until along with expected condition and here we are saying the expected condition is alert is present so it will wait until the alert is present and then you can do anything on the alert you can switch to the alert dismiss the alert accept the alert you can also get the text of the alert and store it in a variable like this and then you can press the ok button uh, cancel button whatever you want to do then if you have a confirmation box again you can do the same thing you can check the alert is present and then you can switch to the alert by using driver dot switch to alert function and then you can get the alert text or press the cancel button or the ok button and then if you have a prompt box where you have an alert along with a text box where you can write something again you will wait until the alert is present and then you can use alert dot send keys to write something in the text box of alert and then you can click on the ok button by saying alert dot accept ok so this is how you can handle javascript alert pop-up boxes confirmation boxes with selenium again if you want you can take a screenshot of the screen and coming to the last scenario you are testing a web application that uses iframes for displaying content from different sources how would you automate interaction with these iframes now iframes are uh, you can say window within the main window of your web application and this in this particular area in this particular window uh, data from external sources can be shown now with html5 and newer technologies the use of iframe has reduced a lot but still if you face frames and iframes in your web application there are ways we can handle that with selenium so here we can follow these steps the first step will be we will first identify the frame or the iframe by using its locators like id class index position etc and then after creating the locator we will have to go inside the frame for that we will use driver dot switch to frame method okay let us suppose there is a button inside the frame and you want to click on the button if you directly try to keep the locator of the button and try to click on it by using dot click action it will not work you will first have to go inside the frame by using driver dot switch to frame and then click on the button okay so you can do all the actions you want to do within the frame and then finally you have to come out of the frame you have to switch to the main window and for that you can use driver dot switch to default content okay and this is how you can handle alert again there is a, a page on the official website of selenium working with frames and iframes so you can see let us say this is the backend of the page the dom of the page where you can see there is a button here and this button is inside this frame okay so if you try to click on the button without going inside the frame this will not work you will first have to go inside the frame for this you will first create a locator of the frame like this and then you will switch to the frame and then you will click on the button okay and you can also uh, locate the frame using its id or class so here you can see we have used id to switch to the frame to find the frame and then switch to the frame and again then we are uh, here we are using name and then we can do the actions inside the frame okay we can also find the frame and switch to the frame using the index of the frame so if there are multiple frames on the page it will have indexes like index position 0 1 2 3 and so on and we can use the index to find and switch to the frame okay and then finally we have to leave the frame and for that we use driver dot switch to default content all right so this is how you will handle frames and iframes and these are the four scenarios if you have any questions if you have any doubts or if you want to discuss anything with me if you have more scenarios that you want me to show and take up in the next episode you can let me know in the comment section below and i will see you in the next session of ask raghav thank you for watching and never stop learning